Welcome back to another unhinged rant about AOTP. At the end of my recent colored tier list series, I received a request from a user by the name of Ray O'Connell begging and pleading with me to make a full tier list. In benevolence, I decided to go along with his request, to an extent. The AOTP squad of users on Discord caught wind of this early, and join us if you haven't already, links are in the description. I'm using TierMaker to make three separate videos to rank each of the primary army components in AOTP against each other. One video to compare all the planeswalkers, one to compare all of the creatures, and one video to compare all of the spells. You may also find links to my tier maker templates in the description below. Feel free to make a list for yourself and share with us on the Discord. I'm going to use the same general ranking metrics as I did for my color tier list series. These entities will score higher in my tier list, mostly based on their contribution in a 1v1 AOTP game where the goal is to slay either the enemy planeswalker or their entire army while playing on an AOTP map or relatively competitive Heroescape map. 2v2s and their performance in the official AOTP scenarios will also play a part in how I rank things but those will have less weight in Final Judgment. Alright, we're back in Tier Maker. Welcome to my Creatures uh, tier list video. If you haven't seen my Planeswalker tier list video, please go check that one out. So I'm going to be using pretty generically the same metrics as I did for Planeswalkers in that for each of these creatures. Well, first of all, they're, again, I'm going to go white, blue, black, green, red. I mean, yeah, red, green, I always mix those up. And then also that um, I'm going to be considering what each army card like their their stats and abilities and how good that is but also in, in unison with how well the colors spells uh support the creature and or like its play style or its optimal play styles i'm just gonna jump right in here our first one white's core hookers at 60 points i would say they're decent maybe high decent tier or low good tier Considering they cost 60 points and they have the same base stats as the Rocks uh, veterans, except they have two more range, uh, the Hookers do, I would say I like them more than the Rocks, honestly. Uh, Detain is really powerful in certain situations and is still generally useful for most games, barring the Heroes Only builds. Uh, when you come across the Heroes Only army, Detain doesn't do anything for you, unfortunately. They're rather vanilla, but they're pretty good, like they're pretty cheap at 60 points for the stats that they give you. They're pretty decent, even if they didn't have Detain. Next up are the Rhinos, the Rocks Veterans, putting them poor tier. As I kind of mentioned with the Hookers, uh, the Rocks, yeah, their base stats really aren't very good considering their point cost. Like, you put them directly next to the Palmeru Elementals, and it's just like, the Elementals have plus one, plus one over the Rocks. Uh, and I just don't like white spells, uh, you know, this kind of applies for hookers too, but I don't really like white spells a whole lot. They don't seem super good. The battle formation, I don't think it's, it gimps them. Like, it's it's like the developers took probably what should have been four base toughness, subtract two, and made it into an ability so that these guys, like, have to be glued to one another effectively to, like, to be worth their points. And so it makes it hard to keep them all with four toughness and get all of their attacks going at the same time because of the way that you have to play with them in a triangle formation or otherwise if you go in like a line or split them up in any way, they're losing toughness if you do that. Um, trample is okay and white does have enough power buffing spells that trample is useful sometimes but the palm roots having four base power and trample just makes the palm roots still better than the rocks. Uh, not a huge fan. They're, I like them as passive pieces. I like the Rocks Veterans as passive defenders, unfortunately. So they don't contribute much, in my opinion. Next up, Core Aeronaut Captain. I think I'm going to put him in mm, probably low to mid good tier. He's not one to be fighting squads, that's for sure. Uh, this guy's niche is absolutely Planeswalker and Hero Assassination. He has the mobility to support it. He has all of the insane white, uh, the white hero support spells to, to also support that in that like tenacity, chaplain's blessing, survive the night, hope against hope. He has everything he needs so that like you can 
almost uh, all eggs in one basket kind of thing with him and have a reasonable chance of just sending him straight at the enemy planeswalker and killing that planeswalker. His air, the air raid, I really don't focus on trying to carry my, you know, my, my other, my other squaddies and my army with him. He's, he really is more of like a cruise missile. Just like summon him, send him at his target until he dies. That's really all there is to it. Give him your white spells, have him beat the snot out of something. And anything else past that is gravy. He's, yeah, he's just very weak at fighting multiple figures and squads can overwhelm him. Um, given, you know, one or two turns with his uh, relatively low life and low toughness. For his Planeswalker assassination role, pretty pretty decent figure here. We got a, a pretty good monster. Next up are the Racists a Avicinian Inquisitors. I don't see them very differently than the Rocks. Um, I think I like them slightly more because of their Innovacian's name. Innovation's name effectively lets you support one of your other squads with a uh, plus one power. I generally summon them, similar to the rocks. I will just summon them and usually leave them. You know, I'll hang them to dry. I just want them to be a meat shield and to give me their support for like one of my other offensive squads. I think Red, like Nahiri, especially likes this. To, to give like the fire cats or the flame wing phoenixes or even the bloodline nobles plus one power counter uh, from summoning these guys but in general they're not going to contribute a whole lot they are very decent at fighting other creatures because of their um, righteous purge they're because of their racism power that they they can smash non-human figures for pretty decent damage like they effectively have base four power against most creatures in the game so that gives them a small niche against some of the heroes and again against some of the squads but when the primary objective is usually to kill the enemy planeswalker i'm not activating them very much in in, in those scenarios a face in uh, there's <laughs> there's almost no way i can't put her top tier the raging angel can do almost everything uh needs a little bit of luck sometimes but a lot a lot of what i said about the core captain applies to her except that she has madness of angels which means she can deal multiple damage madness of angels deals one damage to all enemy creatures um adjacent to evasion at the end of her turn so she is very good at killing hordes of creatures but again she suffers slightly from the fragility problem having six life three toughness uh, flying helps her hold high ground, and again, white has lots of healing and toughness buffs, so her main flaws are generally covered by white spells. She can do it all. She can kill heroes, she can kill squads, she can annoy a planeswalker. Although madness doesn't work against planeswalkers, she can still all it takes is plus one or two power, and she can really pound a planeswalker. Excellent figure, one of the best heroes, if not the best hero in the game. All right, we're moving on to blue. First up, we have the illusionary projections. Probably above the core captain, uh, in the good tier. Having the highest base range of all figures, of all figures, of all creatures in the game. How about that? They tie with the Murfolk, the Murfolk Royal Mage at six. Um, as a base range for a squad, especially, is pretty decent. They are kind of glass cannons, and I think that prevents them from being top tier in that two life and two toughness. They generally die in, in two attacks, if not one. Their two abilities are both really powerful, really useful though. You summon them and you get to draw a card. Illusionary Deception is also wonderful. <laughs> you, just, you can free teleport an Illusionary uh, Projection and your Planeswalker with no uh, leaping engagement attacks. Just just a great, they're great for scenarios too. They give you that the mobility that you might sorely need to like get across the map or to teleport to a specific point at like the very last turn in the game. Very, very versatile, just slightly glass cannon like easy to kill, which definitely prevents them from being top tier, in my opinion. Next up are the Leyline Phantoms. I think I also like these guys more than the Core Captain, but less than the Illusionary Projections. So good, definitely good. The stats alone make them like, again, compare them to something like the Palmaru Elementals or even the Rocks Veterans. Their stats alone at their point cost, like just makes them so much better than a lot of the other melee squads in the game. Five, five toughness is insane. They got six move, and then Phantom Walk is really just icing on the cake. So these guys definitely emphasize Blue's like crazy mobility and like positioning shenanigans, while also having the stats to back it up. <laughs> very good, very good squad. Next up is the hero, the Merfolk Royal Mage. I think I'm gonna put him below these white squads. He's not super good. You know what? I think because of his range, I'm gonna bump him above the squads. 
He's a very vanilla ranged hero in that, like, I don't find either of his abilities very useful or, like, very impactful. Four power is okay. It, like, it's enough to put in work sometimes. His two big saving graces are that he's a hero creature, so he is immune to a lot of the shenanigans, the spells, the abilities that really take a dump on squads. So that helps him a little bit. That helps almost every hero, to, to be clear. Um, and then his range of six is also decent like decent enough to that you can get high ground with him and generally maintain high ground while shooting but he doesn't really contribute outside of being single single attacking ranged hero next up our blues lantern guys oh these annoying little pieces of crap i'm gonna put them below a and i think a is probably more useful more powerful than they are because they are susceptible to a lot of like insta kill squad shenanigans black can really easily deal with uh the lantern guys white has a lot of ways uh with like silver strike fell the mighty those cases aside these guys are really really annoying any color that doesn't bring or any build that doesn't bring like squad insta kills or some kind of squad manipulation mechanics uh, and tries to kill these guys with like just straight up combat dice is really going to suffer. Blue can resummon them, or I should say flicker them to heal them and then resummon them every single turn as long as they're taking the turn with their planeswalker. Add in eerie observation so that like you're really you're keeping notes on what your opponent is drawing. These guys are like ultimate control figures. They really are. They don't deal a lot of damage on their own. They can via LEAs. But you, you never take a turn with them. They're here mostly to annoy your opponent when you take your turn with your Planeswalker. Very bulky, very annoying. I love them. Ooh, next up is Necro Alchemist. I think, he, I think he's definitely better than the Royal Mage. He has the point cost, though, increased, you know, to go along with that. He's still better uh, point for point than the Royal Mage. Not by a whole lot, but still. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go high. I think high. I think he probably more worthwhile than the hookers i think we're gonna go high decent tier for him his stats are kind of like in between the royal mage and like jace B Balaran. i think what kind of sets him over the edge for me or like over the royal mage for me is that his it works and um was it geist powered apparatus effectively those two abilities combine to really give this guy a base of five power like let's face it it's not hard to play a spell and then you just remove one counter from him. A unit with five base power and five range, uh, it, it pretty closely mirrors Jace Balaran and it makes the Necro Alchemist pretty good at shooting and nuking things, especially when you toss something like Royal Mage's Trick in there. He's a pretty decent like planeswalker slash hero assassin with his small range. Uh, and also, he can take a beating with seven life. He's really not terrible at frontlining, all things considered. Heading into black, we have the Restless Zombies. I think they're going low top tier, maybe mid top tier. I don't think they're better than the other two in the top tier right now. Black can do a lot of shenanigans thanks to the Restless Zombies and Darkness Arises especially. Their stats, you know, just straight up stats, horrid. Terrible stats. Darkness Arises is everything for these guys. Darkness Arises allows them to keep coming back. They, they just enable black to fuel all of their black things. Um, the black spells, Altars Reap, uh, Painful Truths, um, Omnic Seals can use at any price on them. These guys are just awesome just to, to run up and like charge them into the opponent repeatedly. Like your opponent cannot play passively against black because zombies will continuously come to haunt them. It really gives black, like any opponent who decides they want to try a long game against black, it's, it's not going to end well for them. The rest of the zombies will... Uh, We'll make sure that Black has the edge in those games. Really, just excellent. Next up are the Blighted Reavers. I'm going to put them in low good tier. I think I like all three of these these army cards more than the Reavers. Uh, I think the primary thing holding the Reavers back is their point cost. I think point for point, the Leyline Phantoms, the Leyline Phantoms are just better than the Reavers. The Leyline Phantoms have one more move and two more toughness. Um, arguably a slightly weaker ability than the Reavers, but I don't think the Reavers' ability makes up for the uh, 20 point difference, as well as the additional one move and two toughness that the Leyland Phantoms have. 
they, they have a lot of synergy with uh, Liliana, like, especially in your zombie tribal. Like, Liliana can just summon them, uh, like, adjacent to, like, uh, or near enemy squaddies, which gives her the ability on that same turn to shoot one of those squads at their minus two power, or, I'm sorry, at their minus two toughness, and then also highly likely get the opportunity to snuff them out after that attack. But on top of that, they can bomb with the Ghoul Vanguard, and, and they're just good f fighters by themselves, especially if you put Duress or Dark Harvest on them. Not quite top tier, probably because of their costs and that they can just be maimed by all of the anti-squad stuff, especially from white, blue, and black, which kind of keeps them down a little bit. That and their low move. Low move is something I forgot. They have really bad move, and so it is sometimes really easy for green and blue, especially to kite them and deal with them. Malakir Blood Chasers. Probably just below the Reavers and like low good tier. The Malakir Blood Chasers are just really powerful when they get rolling. If, as long as you have some reasonable defense rolls with them so that they can get an opportunity to use lifelink. Their base 4 power on top of the, um, the, the Blood Sense. Oh my gosh. I can't remember the name of the ability. The one that gives them one automatic hit while they're attacking figures that are already damaged. They are really good hero killers and planeswalker assassins. Uh, they have pretty reasonable move to back that up as well. I, I do think their biggest downfall is they're relatively expensive and they only have two life and three toughness, which makes it hard for them to do what they need to do before they die and also make use of their life link. Uh, they're kind of frail. Um, but again, you get a couple of good defense rolls and you get these guys where they need to go. They can really put a lot of hurt on a Planeswalker, which is why I think they score this high. Is They can very, very easily and quickly end games. Next up, Skurzdag Cultists. I don't even know if I'd use them over the, the Merfolk Royal Mage. Oh man. Yeah, I'm going to put I'm gonna put them down here. I think I, I think I like this. So they don't synergize a ton with black in general. They're not a zombie, so a lot of like the other black figures and spells that like say like do this to non-zombies, it completely messes these guys up. Their main use is going to be killing squads. Everything else in black is already good at killing squads. I mean, the planeswalkers themselves, Sora and Liliana, Ab, they're all good at killing squads. You don't need to put more points into squad killing. <laughs> you need more points into assisting your uh, your ability to kill heroes, which I think might also be why the other black squads are higher, because they're all pretty decent into heroes, if not good into heroes. Skurzdag Cultists are generally not that good into heroes or killing planeswalkers. I think Skurzdag Cultists are generally just win more against squads, which black already does well enough and doesn't need more of. Ghoul Vanguard! I think I like him slightly more than the Royal Mage. They're pretty close in my opinion. I'm going to put him low decent. Uh, primarily for the zombie uh, the zombie tribal with Liliana, the Rust of Zombies, and the Blighted Reavers. Lots of synergy with the zombies. Shambling shambling ranks of the dead, like that alone. So he can like move a Reaver, like you're allowed to move and attack with the Reaver first at the start of the Vanguard's turn. That's pretty good synergy considering the Reaver can then be repositioned to give the uh, Ghoul Vanguard the ability to kill something. Um, to be more likely to kill an enemy squad, let's say, to then you know, re-raise it from Wake the Dead. Other than like the, the tons of zombie synergies though, 5 life is a little low. The Ghoul Vanguard is really average. Again, <laughs> low move and no range keeps a lot of black in check, uh, in my opinion. Alright, into red now. Flamewing Phoenixes. I think I'll put them low, decent. I tend to enjoy playing the Phoenixes. I think they offer you, like, especially in larger point games, they offer both you and your opponent more interesting decisions. As far as, like, whether you should try and rebirth, like, you as the red, like, should you buff them? Should you try and rebirth them and snowball them into a super unit? And then your opponent has to consider the same, to be like, should they take, like, extra disengages or drop some more powerful spells to deal with the phoenixes? Unfortunately, especially in smaller point games, um, or even on, like, mono red itself, it's hard to make them snowball when red can't buff their toughness with anything other than stubborn resilience. They rebirth kind of slowly. You also have to play a red sorcery, which means dual color builds, like your Arlin and your Nahiri, are since you're mixing in white sorceries, white enchantments, green sorcery, you know, all that, that means you have less space for red enchantments, red sorceries, sorry. It's a very fine line, 
and like there's games where they do almost nothing for me which is okay at 35 points honestly and then there's games where they can snowball out of control which is kind of rare but when that happens it's really fun like when you can get them to have four power four toughness they're really fun to continuously have them come back and keep smashing everything all in all though i'm not super impressed with them i generally like to use them as meat shields and that's it up next blazing fire cats it's hard not to put them in top tier it really is I'm going to put them in high good tier. I think they are kind of kept from top tier because of somewhat high cost uh, and their low life. The two life is unfortunately kind of a bummer. Red isn't a fantastic color either, but it's good enough to support these guys in their role as a melee striker, let's face it. Uh, intense strike is just dummy powerful. You put any number of power buffs on them and intense strike is basically always triggering at that. Like, you get, you get them plus one, plus two power. Intense Strike is just free automatic hit on every attack. Haste is pretty good. There are certain times where summoning the Fire Cats and not taking advantage of Haste is a good idea to prevent them from being steamrolled, like, by your opponent. Yeah, their two life makes it kind of easy to kill them. This prevents them, I think, from being top tier, in my opinion. Uh, they're kind of random-ish. They're, you know, you need good attack dice rolls, but when they get those attack dice rolls, they slaughter things for sure. Uh, they can end games very easily. Next up, Goblin Javelineers. I think I like them here. Low decent. Uh, I think I like all of these figures more than the Goblins. So, the biggest reason in my mind why the Goblins score here is just the comparison to the Firecats and the, uh, the Phoenixes. I think the Firecats are better than the the javelineers in every way double space double space allows you to summon the fire cats further out uh they have haste like the javelineers just have the uh, the volatile he hedron javelin it's okay like it, it can only hit creatures which is kind of a bummer and you can only use it once per turn when you activate the goblins but them them having um five move and two toughness isn't super good they have three life, so they're kind of survivable, but I think their five move is my biggest qualm with them. Really slow, shockingly slow, considering Phoenixes and Firecats, I think, have six and seven move, respectively. They do hit like a truck when they get there, though. The, uh, the goblins hit like a truck, and you give them one or two power buffs, the goblins can hit really hard. It's just that they don't have the move to really to pull that off as often as the Firecats can. Still not a terrible squad. They're very usable. Up next, uh, the Bloodline Nobles. I'm tempted to put them trash tier, and I think that's where they're gonna go. Top of trash tier. Uh, <laughs> these guys basically have one use. Summon them somewhere in where they can be safe and try and buff them with one or two power buffs and send them in to get one attack and then die. That's pretty much it. Two life, two toughness. Their stats are basically the same as Blue's Illusionary Projections. Uh, but without the range, which is kind of a big deal. Well, without the range and without the good abilities, Arrogant Strike is okay. It's definitely red. Like, it's it's red and then more red. Like, just you, you buff yourself with red power and then you get more power. That's really their only role is, like, uh, you put, put them somewhere safe. They're going to be an assassin. If your opponent approaches, drop your power buffs on, on the nobles, walk them in, and hope you get some kills. I... There's just every almost any other squad is more worthwhile than than the than the, uh, the blue line nobles in my opinion. I more times than not would take the scions. Scions are cheaper and have better stats than the nobles. So uh, I I just don't like the nobles. Up next is the Mad Prophet. I think I'm gonna put him just above the Ghoul Vanguard. Mad Prophet is pretty similar to the core Aeronaut Captain as like a uh, a unit that's in the role of Planeswalker and Hero Assassination. Mad Prophet is, he has one more toughness though, and he lacks flying, so in some ways I think Mad Prophet is hampered uh, with his role of trying to kill especially more mobile planeswalkers and heroes. He is bulkier though, and I think he's a decent beat stick when you need him to be against squads. He can usually hold his position for a turn or two against a bunch of squads. Haste with uh, insistent ravings, he's really good if you can summon him next to an enemy planeswalker. Like as long as he's in your reserve, his presence basically prevents most enemy planeswalkers from approaching your red planeswalker. So that's pretty good insurance by itself. He helps against heroes too for the same reason. Just a, just a bit weaker in squad games, but still very decent. Uh, I, I like him enough that I would use him in most of my red builds. All right, we're on to green elf rangers. I like them something around 
the hookers. Let's see. I'll probably put them here. I like them more than the Vanguard, and probably more than these squads over here, but less than everything to the left, so sure, middle of decent. I think my biggest problem with them is that, especially if you're using Mono Green with Nyssa, they're, they're basically Nyssa turned into a squad. Problem is, they really want to eat your activations to, to so you can keep using their sprint for remaining out of enemy range. But the issue with that is that as you do that, you seed ground to your opponent, who can then potentially jump, you know, jump at your planeswalker and attack your planeswalker, so that you, like you would have to then take a turn with your planeswalker and leave these guys to be destroyed with their three life, one toughness. They're moderately tanky just because of having three life. They really are. They could take some hits if you need them to, and I will almost always let them take hits instead of potentially getting my planeswalker killed. Against the Kessig Rangers, I think there's no contest. Uh, Kessig Rangers just blow these guys out of the water. They make better use of uh, Green's buffs. They can the, the Kessigs can transform into Wolves. The Elf Rangers are just very average. They have some synergy with Green, with like Elvish Blade Finesse, uh, but they're not that powerful or impactful. All right, next up we have Pummel Roots. I like Pummel Roots in the good tier. It's just a matter of where. I think I like them here. I believe, as I mentioned before, that like the Reavers, their cost kind of holds them back. Compare the Palm Roots to the Reavers and the Ley Lines, and you can kind of see why I put them here. Stat like Statistically, they're very similar to these other squads. Um, they're cheaper than the Reavers, which I think makes them slightly better. Uh, their four power is honestly kind of obscene. Um, Reavers are not super good. Like They can be good at killing Planeswalkers with some buffs, where out the gate, the, the Pummel Roots don't need buffs, and they can really pummel a Planeswalker. But you add in all of Green's buffs alongside of it, like when you get um, Paths Revealed, Overrun, Titanic, Growth, like one or two Pummel Roots can really take a dump on some things, especially with uh, Trample. Trample prevents your opponent from generally like trying to meat shield you. Green really supports uh, the Pummel Roots in a really good way. Okay, Path Wardens uh, are the worst squad in the game. Uh, very passive squad. Everything about them screams set and forget squad. Three power, five toughness for a two-man squad that costs 100 points. 100 points. Each one of them effectively costs you 50 points. And when they can be insta-killed through their three life and five toughness, which is pretty tanky, but when you have, like, blue can unsummon them or mind control them and move them out of the way so that, like, you can't benefit from their, um escort ability so blue really messes with them black white and even red too with direct damage but like black and white can insta kill them and that's really expensive for green to get these guys insta killed um and red can also pretty much insta kill them with like incinerate dual shot um superheated um even the goblin javaneer's ability there's a lot of ways to bypass high defense figures way too passive way too expensive for my liking um absolutely just not good all right, here we go. <laughs> if you haven't seen my tier list videos, you're you're missing out uh, on an idiot drooling over a, a plastic figurine. Uh, Kessig Rangers, Kessig Ravagers, they can transform into each other. Um, top tier, absolute. The best army card amongst the creatures, it is absolutely Kessig Rangers. Having green to buff their range with like Snare of the Skies, Nissa giving them two additional range makes them really annoying to deal with too. Um, also additional power with Overrun, uh, Titanic Growth, and then you add in like the double attack, the Hunt at Dawn or the Hunt at Dusk. It, you can put in so much work with that one guy that is seen. Even if one of them dies too, is that like at the start of the turn, you pick one of them for that turn to have double attack. So even if there's one Ranger left, you still effectively have a guy that can attack twice and still be buffed to high hell and murder like pretty much anything. You mix them with Arlin and it just gets even more obscene. Uh, Twin Flame, Titanic Growth, Kessig Double Attack. You win. You just win if you get those. Kessig Ravagers are just good, bulky frontline fighters. Use these guys, give them Titanic Growth, Overrun, Twin Flame, Fire Breathing, and just watch them demolish things. Alright, the, uh, the final set of figures. Eldrazi Scions. I think I like the Hookers more. I might like them more than the Mad Prophet, though. I think I'm going to put them right there. I think they're very decent. Being colorless is definitely pretty nice. Like they, since they're dirt cheap, relatively speaking, they're dirt cheap. Um, 55 points for a three-man squad. I think a lot, a lot of planeswalkers really appreciate having access to this really cheap squad. They have better stats than a lot of these guys down here, like below them. 
just statistically at 55 points with a three-man squad with you know with the Scion stats. Like if you compare them to like the uh, the racists or uh, the uh, the Bloodline Nobles or the Path Wardens, like for 55 points you get three of these guys, where one Warden costs 50 points. These guys have more move. They got the seven move. They have the synergies with the Ruiner, but they are perfectly fine without the Ruiner as just like a vanilla meat shield melee unit. I, there's really no major complaints. They're not game warping, but you, if you have 55 points to spare and you have nothing else to spend it on, just get these guys. They, they will absolutely do something for you. And last but not least, the big boy himself, the Ruiner. I think I might put him right here. I like him a lot. Um, my opinions on him have changed a little bit over time. I used to think he was top tier. Being a double space figure with five move can sometimes bite him in the ass. And I think that's why I put him especially below the other flying heroes who have one more move and flying. Um, planeswalkers are generally pretty mobile and or have high range. So it can be hard for the Ruiner to catch up and kill some planeswalkers like uh, Chase Bellerin. Um, Arlen, Nissa. Uh, outside of those, though, he's just a really good generic. Again, send him in. He's going to trash a lot of things. For 150 points, I think you get pretty much everything you pay for and maybe a little bit more with this guy. Um, he shines, especially in white builds. He really enjoys all the healing that white gives him, and any extra power buffs just means he's one-shotting more and more things. He's pretty similar to Evasion with that he deals one automatic damage. You know, at the start of his turn, though, instead of at the end. And I think Evasion is slightly better for that ability. That she can move and then deal the damage, where with him, you, you deal his damage at the start of the turn, which means you can't maneuver him first, other than using Blue's Essence Flux or Red's uh, Rush of Adrenaline. Um, which give those spells really good synergy with him, absolutely. But um, his 8 life is really good. His otherworldly makes him also very annoying for ranged uh, creatures to deal with him, because 8 life and 5 toughness is no joke to fight through. Uh, just to note though that, yeah, otherworldly does not work against planeswalkers, so ranged planeswalkers are usually thirsty for shooting him, as long as they can remain outside of his threat range. This is what a good hero looks like, although he slightly lacks mobility. Um, he's, he does everything else really well. I think I like my tier list here. So let me know what you think in the comments. And again, I will leave a link to this in the description below. You can check out the template, make up your own tier list, drop it off in the Discord, and uh, fire up a chat with us. Next video is going to be for uh, tiering the spells. That's 135 spells. So uh, be prepared. And uh, we'll see y'all in the next video.